Okay, so, so my name is Merwan Deba, and I'm actually a, a director of uh, the Mathematical and Algorithmic Sciences Lab of Huawei, as well as uh, the new established center that we've been building recently on more the fundamentals of mathematics called the Lagrange Center. And uh, within my position, of course, I work on several topics, and especially in our lab. We have roughly today, you have to know, in uh, the R&D of Huawei in France, roughly 200 people. Uh, on the site, which is in Paris, with which I'm closely related to, we're mostly working on, uh, of course, machine learning topics, AI, uh, 5G and beyond, optical communication and networking, with, of course, a big focus on the mathematical aspects. Um, overall, in France, we have other sites, which are also int of interest, basically, with respect to uh, the panel we had the discussion, and especially two sites, one in Sofia Antipolis, which works mostly on... Um, uh, the camera of our phone, and for which basically all the sensors are quite important. Another lab also in Grenoble, which works exactly on topics related to sensing and how you can use basically the smartphone to uh, help on health issues. First of all, I think the, the, the panel was, was well designed. Uh, I'd like, of course, to, 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 to congratulate uh, the organizers for that, especially on the, on the different backgrounds of the people. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, for example, in my case, I'm more a telecommunication expert. And so I brought basically, I think, the point of view, which is mostly around uh, the pipes, the telecom structure that is required related to the, the health industry. But then we had also more people, um, um, uh, let's say diving in more uh, the AI expertise, as well as knowing better uh, all the consequences related to health and ethics. Uh, the conclusion of course, was that AI um, will be playing a very important role. Um, one of the takeaways um, within the health industry. And for many reasons, not necessarily to invent new solutions, but also you know, to accelerate the process of creating some solutions, things which are manual would go much faster. There was also, of course, all the cases related to uh, uh, how you um, are sure that there is some kind of understanding with the patient, with the fact that you're bringing technology there and how their user experience could be improved. And also the conclusions that are brought by AI and how also human intervention within the process is very important. And I think the fact that people had different point of views also coming from different countries, I think that was also important because the kind of expertise and, and, and view that you can have uh, in France would not necessarily be the same that you would have in England or in another place. And so uh, my thought is that uh, this is a kickstart of uh, uh, more things that are gonna be done in this uh, AI for Health school, I hope next year, uh, which are not necessarily only at the technical level, but also more at the management understanding level. Yeah, so th that's a good question. So first of all, as a global company, uh, maybe some people do not know uh, our company very precisely, but we are a company which is providing what we call end-to-end -end solutions. End-to-end -end solutions meaning that we provide the pipes on which the data will be transported and that's fiber, wireless, you call it 5G, whatever, to make the life much more easier in terms of bringing connectivity to the hospitals. Second thing also that Huawei is bringing is also what we call the devices and terminals, because whatever you do, you do it on a computer, a smartphone, a tablet, a screen, and all these are very important in terms of user experience and how you exchange. Is it gonna be a touch screen? Is it gonna be with, with, a, with, a, with a mouse? And how are you gonna do it? And this is what we call the consumer and device perspective which is also some things we're working on today to bring, of course, more capability to all the, the processes and also basically the good user experience so people feel comfortable when talking remotely, for example, and having a, 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 a doctor that you're consulting at a very long distance and you want to talk to him. So you need the right structure, infrastructure. And we're working, for example, I'll, I'll talk about it on, on helmets, 3D helmets, stuff like that, where you have this immersive experience uh, especially for all people when they're far away, where they feel exactly that the person is very close to them and also going much ahead, one, one step ahead in terms of also feeling the touch, feeling the environment, which comes very important. The third one also very important is uh, on all the processes that we're seeing, um, hospitals, for example, need also um, uh, 
computing capability to crash the data and and servers basically to store that and with all the confidentiality that's behind security that's behind and also Huawei in this end-to-end -end solution provides uh, the computing platforms and also the, the, the storage platforms. We have a, 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 a division called the Enterprise Business Group, which exactly provides this for hospitals. So um, the, the, the health, I would say, global industry per se uh, was something that we started more than four years ago, okay, by trying to understand better what we call in general industry 4.0, meaning basically the other types of industries that are uh, uh, um, uh, outside there and on which basically you can leverage a lot of, 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 of things to be done. And, and, and health came quite rapidly because of course of the needs that there is and also the specific, I would say, uh, challenges which are related to that. Now, from our side, there are Two ways, or I would say even three ways to attack the, the, the issue of health is, of course, through the machine learning and AI perspective. And this is things that we're doing today uh, uh, related uh, to providing, uh, let's say, platforms on which you can run your data locally by conserving all the privacy with uh, a focus on algorithmic features such as federated learning and other techniques, which basically can learn with very narrow, a narrow number of data uh, and not a, a huge amount and be able to extract only the models so that you can exchange the models between different hospitals, different sites and other things like that. Then the second point where we're working is of course, and our experience of, of building, you have to know that uh, within the COVID in China, uh, we were part of building uh, what this, this famous hospital that was built in 10 days. I don't know if you remember at the beginning yes, when, when the pandemic started, yeah. uh, 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 China started building hospital very fast. And there we needed, uh, uh, we, we were a part of that in, in providing the infrastructure, providing the pipes and all the telecom infrastructure and being able to connect that hospital with different sites in Beijing where a lot of consultation was done remotely and providing all that aspect. And the third one, which we're seeing coming very fast is of course that uh, there's a big need basically to cloudify uh, all the needs of these hospitals because they cannot buy uh, basically all the infrastructure inside. And so they need what we call a, a service which is being brought. And that service is very specific in terms of need where you're running basically all the terminals and all the software remotely at a given distance. And we're also trying to work on that with the specific needs of the hospitals, as you know, which have a very hard constraint in terms of privacy. Awesome. I talked about uh, the shift from cloud to a perspective which was called on-device AI. Uh, and, 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 and I have maybe to give you a bit of a story before the health, and then we realized how much the health industry uh, was very important from that point of view. But you have to know that in our company, uh, we, we, uh, we sell base stations, which means the infrastructure, which was something we were working since many years with 2G, 3G, 4G. And for which basically uh, things were related to the fact that uh, 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 by going one step forward, you would basically process information, store information, basically within the network in general. That's the network. And we're very good at network. But then we started in 2008 by going through what we call the consumer, providing the devices. And by understanding the needs of the devices, we realized that a lot of computing, and today computing is, is mostly uh, driven by machine learning perspective, had to be done more closer to the users. And so we started building what we call on-device AI. That's the first thing we, thought we did. And it, it, it was a big challenge. It was a big challenge because uh, uh, running basically AI on a device turns out to be a problem of energy. You, need, you, need, you have a lot of constraints in terms of consumption. The kind of, of crashing that you used to do in the cloud where you didn't think about it at all, the complexity turns out to be something very specific. And we started working on algorithms of the type of what we call binary neural networks, where basically you start reducing the resolution on which you run basically your algorithm on chipsets. And we started building some kind of NPUs, which we call neural processing units, which are very, very tailored. And today we're selling a, a bunch of chipsets, 
which are exactly tailored to that need. That's the first thing. Second thing is that, of course, we needed to leverage the huge amount or massive amount of small data, which is spread around, okay? We're not the only one. There are as many people who have started working on the discipline, and this is what we call the whole framework of distributed AI, meaning how you can run basically uh, an AI platform distributively or massively distributed in a distributed manner. One of the most famous algorithms today, which are used in that perspective is called federated learning, where you learn on one point with a very narrow amount of data, you extract a model. On the second place where you're doing it, in this case, it can be hospital, a device for a patient. You start also learning locally, you extract the model, and then you go somewhere where you aggregate the models. Okay, and then basically then from time to time you rebroadcast that aggregation of model and so that you can leverage from the learning of all the other devices, hospitals, without any kind of exchange of data between them. And so this is something running, trying to find the right architecture for that, and also looking at also the impact on our telecommunication infrastructure for doing that. Third, also a perspective which was, which I think is is also, by the way, very of interest for uh, the AI for Health School in terms of students, is that we came up also with the need to understand better if the existing frameworks which are used today, TensorFlow, Apache, and others, are adequate to the fact that today learning is very pervasive. What I mean by pervasive, it means that it's like a, a an operating system. Uh, you would do today an operating system which is very specific for the computer, an operating system which is very specific to the phone, and we know it. Today, you have Android on the phone, but on, on a computer, you have something else, and you go on like that. And the question is that, was it able to code some kind of algorithmic features and be able to run it on different platforms for had different energy constraints and stuff like that? And for which the existing, I would say today, uh, frameworks are very cloud based in how they were built. And so we started this work also. And today you can go on our website and download it. We have something called MindSpore, which exactly is trying to solve this issue of, of uh, uh, avoiding to the people to code every time something specific with request to the huge number of devices. Of course, this is a dream you have to know for everybody because it would mean that uh, you could run your AI on an IoT. You could run it, IoT here means Internet of Things for which it's like a, a very tiny uh, ML in some sense that you would do to something which is more like a computer, something which is more bigger, like a cluster on which you're doing it. So that's basically the, the whole framework. And so we had, um, fortunately, uh, the opportunity also to move one step forward because, as you know, we sell phones. And one of the things that we have in phones be besides the camera, so today when you buy a phone, there's mostly four features for which you buy a phone. The first one it's because it's beautiful, you know, the look, the design. Second is because basically you have a good battery, so the battery runs things. The third one is basically because you have a good camera. And the fourth one today, why people start buying a phone is because you have AI, so you can run AI apps. And so for us, it was very important to leverage our capability on our phone by adding sensors. And today those sensors are exactly used to measure your temperature and other things. And today, this is one of, of the big axis on which we're working uh, uh, to provide those devices uh, 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 to the people. I'm talking about smartphones, but it's also, of course, watches that we're selling today and all these kind of, of, of uh, I would say, wearables, which are very important for the health industry. Uh, of course, I have a very, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, knowledge, good knowledge, I would say, of the mathematics of AI. And I have also a very good knowledge of the hardware of AI. Uh, in my culture, what has been missing, of course, is this good combination. And I think for the students that are jumping in a field, what matters today is more or less this good combination of being able to be quite open in understanding at the same time the technology which is behind, but also the industry where they're applying it. And I strongly look forward, by the way, 
for the next year AI for Health School. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you're going to be organizing it uh, next year, and that uh, uh, if I can participate, I will be also very happy to give an update of what has been happening within the last year uh, in our company and also in our field.